for another episode of the self development with Tactics podcast. I'm really hungry, um, but I wanted to get this done. Um, it makes sense, by the way, at least in my point of view. And um, sometimes I come this, to this conclusion rather late that, you know, when I'm stuck doing something, it makes a lot of sense to do something else and get this done when it also needs to get done this day. So yeah, um, let's dive into Seth Godin today. I thought, well, um, it's actually been some time since I've been on his website. And uh, even though I think sometimes topics might seem rather obvious, um, they are phrased in, in really well ways. And um, his wording is just amazing, I would say. So I'm going to show you. Seth's blog. Um, I might indeed just push myself to the side. What is next? The way we think about our priorities makes a huge difference. Leaders of every stripe make one thing more than any other decisions. In any environment with constraints, which is actually any environment, the decisions about time and resources about what to do next change everything. How do we decide what is next? Is it based on urgency, proximity, or values? First in, first out is not a strategy. It is an excuse. Even worse, it is the one about the squeezy wheels. Yeah, I mean, what to do next change everything. Yes, indeed. Um, the decisions that we're making, um, I think also the sequence in which we're doing things could or can be optimized. But yeah. No photos. That is what is said at the florist shop. I'm guessing because taking a photo sometimes feels like a uh, taking. The creativity, skill and effort that goes into making a distinctive arrangement might feel uncom uncompensated when someone simply takes the work and posts it. This misses the real point though. Once you have made something worth photographing, having the idea captured and spread helps you. It doesn't hurt. More than ever, people are paying for famous, even if it is a prosaic, as a famous bouquet produced by the originator of the design. The hard part is making something worthy, not protecting it from cameras. I would say so as well, even though I, I really understand, like, I don't want anybody to, you know, use my work and, you know, post it and, um, you know, maybe sometimes even being like, okay, I did that, I made that. Confusion about performance. The thing that you produce your ser I'm sorry, the thing that your product or service delivers could be called performance. It is made of two components. The story and expectations and cultural impact of what you do, so the story, and the deliverables that are objectively measured. The spec. It helps to have both. Many hardworking freelancers are confused about their story. Either they insist that their work is even better than it is and they are frustrated when others don't embrace it or they undersell the value of their presence, professionalism and effort. And many institutions, particularly those that measure the wrong things, put an enormous effort into what the lab specs show but forgets to invest in a narrative that encourages consumers to give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, this is, I think, something I... Uh, I have been talking about for quite some time and have, uh, well, I think also been, uh, been spreading and sharing on a podcast that, um, I mean, in the end, it, it, I think it quite depends on the product that you're selling. If the product is not doing what it says it does, then it is quite useless, even though I'm having a great story. And in the end, I think it is about long-term, uh, customers. It's not about, you know, getting some money short-term at least for most products, I'd say, of course, um, this might be a good strategy to, 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 to gain some money for, for another project that you actually want to work on more. But, uh, well, I think in the end, having a product that works and uh, also has a good story is really essential for having long-term success, I would say, and I would argue. Reimagining cities in a few simple questions. Well, let's not talk about that. I don't know, don't care. Clients and customers can be frustrating. Perhaps they don't know what you know. Perhaps they don't care. 
it is possible to educate and inspire. It might be more productive to find the few that want to go where you do. Oh. I'm very sorry. Yes. Um, good clients, good customers are very hard to find. And I think it is also, well, this process in and of itself can be quite frustrating, but also considering that, um, you know, those ideal customers quite, um, you know, they're also sharing your work. They are enabling you to, um, well, to, to, to even have more customers. And, um, I have been thinking about this one as well quite often and quite ferothly uh, or something. It, 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 it makes sense. And I do not understand why it does not make sense for most people to, of course, it depends on the relationship that you're having with this particular customer. But, and all of this freelancer or this, this product or whatever, but it makes sense for me as someone that is receiving a certain service, um, a certain task, a certain uh, product to, to be like, well, this is a really good product. This is a really good human being. This is a really good service. To develop this, um, to to develop this, you know, maybe maybe community, helping to create this community and or gather these people that you know need this service and would like to have this service because I know as a receiver and receiving end that it is a good one um, to hype this one up because the more it is hyped, the more. Um, it also benefits me having this product. And when I'm kind of the first customer or the first person to, to get this, chances are actually really, really, really big that the person that is giving out this service is like, okay, you know, you've been my first customer. You've always helped me share my stuff and you've always been really supportive. supportive. I'm going to give you a really great price forever. But I, I don't know, you know, sometimes... I have a feeling that um, this is not quite understood, you know, but yeah, anyway, gets, want and have to, gets to, want to and have to are an endless break. How much of your time do we spend on each? Have to is often up to someone else, things we are required to, I'm sorry, required to do, but the system or the people in it gets to is a matter of perspective. Trust and health and leverage and privilege allows us to do certain things that others might not. And want to is a choice and is often squandered. When our day is drawing to a close and we have done everything we have to, uh, the choice of how to spend, invest, waste the next few minutes often ends up with mindless stalling or entertainment. The magic trick begins with realizing that the get to tasks are priceless want to moments if we choose. And if we are careful and plan ahead, we can get to the point where the have to do agenda is something we can eagerly look forward to. When all three are in sync, things get better. Yeah. Um, when things are not as straining, you know, maybe even funny to do those just once. Um, I do not necessarily um, like mindless stalling or entertainment. So mindless entertainment. Um, I think mindlessness is is a really big one. Also for me, I have meant uh, I've 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 noticed today that uh, I seem to be quite tired, even though I've slept enough. Might also be because I'm hungry and haven't eaten anything today, and it is uh, already two p.m. Um, you know, might be that, but I'm having a lot of brain fog today. I'm I'm, I'm you know have, having really quite difficulties to learn what I what I should be learning um, or doing, so to speak. But yeah. Period, I think. I guess with that being said, I'm going to end the episode there. I should really, really eat something to get done what I should get done. But yeah, I'm going to see you next time. I at least hope so.